Hi guys, I'm going to continue with my Hinkley Open series and in this game I was playing white against Roy Hughes, he's rated 1900 and this is round 3 of the Hinkley Open so I started off with E3 which is uh, sort of the opening I came up with the idea of just playing F4 uh, as a classical Dutch uh, about 10 foot ahead so say they play something like D5 the idea I was like, I'm going to play F4 Knight of six, knight of three, and then say you know, g six, bishop e two, bishop g seven, castles, castles, d three, c five, not a four. So basically, it's just a classical Dutch, but it's white. So I'm actually got a tempo ahead, which is really useful because it means I can just use that extra tempo to hide my king away in the corner, which in a lot of uh, classical Dutch hands is black. If you could have your king on h one, then your position would be a lot better. And if they play after e3, say so e5, stopping f4, then I play c4, and then south knight f6, d3, and this just goes into a reverse Sicilian, it's like a knight off position. So, yeah, it's fairly interesting playing e3. It takes my opponents out of theory as well, which is always nice. So c5 is all my opponent played. So on f4, knight c6, knight f3, knight 6 which should be 2, d5, castles, e6, d3. Queen c7, and on knight c3. So knight c3, now I'm meaning to play this very important break in classical Dutch, where you play e4, and um, was threatened to come to, he want, my opponent wants to put his bishop onto d6, and he can't do that yet because he knight b5. So he decides to play a6 first, and now e4, bishop b7, a4. So I'm stopping him playing b5 and expanding on the queen side. So he gets to b6 instead, queen e1. So the common theme, the idea is to bring a queen around to the king side. And if he ever plays something like knight d4, I can just drop my bishop back to d1 to protect this this c2 pawn. So my opponent played uh, bishop b7 here, queen g3, so I'm attacking the pawn with g7. And now after knight to d4, I went for e5 now. So I played bishop d1. Um, I'm actually losing pawn on e4. So I played e5 instead first, and now after knight takes e2, knight takes e2, knight h5, queen h3, g6. So protecting knight, also allowing it a, a way out. After knight g7, knight f5. So I played c3. Uh, the idea of c3 is to it's just, well, it's just, it keeps my pawn structure very flexible. If, if my opponent advances in the center, I can just uh, bypass the pawn and keep the position closed. And it's the same if he goes d4. Well, I could probably take here actually. Uh, but say he had a rook on d8 or something, I can just probably just play c4, something like this. Just keep the position closed. So, so I do it going c3. So my opponent played knight g7. And now I went d4. So I figured that if he took here, it didn't really matter. It's actually quite good for me. I can just. I'll probably capture the pawn just because I can get a rook to the c file. And now this bishop is locked in, and this bishop's also pretty locked in too. So. Although, yeah, my bishop's locked in, Bar's going to do this. I was going to bring it around and trade it off. Attack these. Weak dark squares. And also, I played d4 because I don't want him to play d4 himself. So, in this position, something about like d4 in the future, where well, I have to play c4. Because now he's got his nice diagonal for his bishop, which is quite annoying. So, I just stopped any any ideas of that and just played d4 myself. He goes king d7. Fairly sensible move. And castle and king side being a little suicidal. Especially when I or moves like knight g5 coming in, something like knight g5 here, and then if he if he does any taking, he's got a load of dark, uh, weak weak squares around his king. I can just not put my rook up uh, to to h4 and start pack, start attacking the, uh, the weak h7 pawn. So yeah, my my opponent played king d7. It's a sensible move. And now bishop e3, knight f5, bishop f2, 
So now I can play g4 next move. Kick the knight away. He plays a5, pretty good move. Now bishop a6 is uh, really activating that bishop. So I went g4, knight retreats, knight g5, bishop a6. So, so if you well, I put try bishop takes g5, this wouldn't be correct, I don't think. So after I take and then move the bishop to e3, I'm going to have a really nice attack against this uh, backwards f pawn. And I can put my queen in on on uh, h6, and I think I'd just easily w uh, win this position now. So he decided not to do that. And he played bishop a6 instead. Rook to a1, rook a8, f8. And now he's going to play something like h6 and kick my knight. So I play queen h6 myself, and the knight has to retreat. So knight e8, bishop h4, so I'm ready to capture on h7 next move and trade off bad uh, for good bishop. Queen c6. Now this is a really annoying move for me because he's, he's going to come around the back and start taking this pawn and this pawn is going to be weak and there's not much I can do to protect this pawn. So I can't put my rook here because the bishop will take my knight and if I play something like b3, you know, this is probably even worse, I can just play something like c4 and uh, all these pawns are just very, start to, they can become very weak, and uh, you know I think I'm going to end up losing for them. So instead, I decide to sort of counter attack with knight takes h7. So now I'm afraid to take on um, take on f8 with a check. So he went rook fg8, she takes e7, bishop king takes e7. Now queen g5 check. That's the idea of putting a bishop on h4 because now I can. Put my queen on g5 check, and after king moves, I can now uh, get this knight out of there. And uh, yeah, it's not pinned to my queen anymore. So after king d7, knight f6 check, the knight takes, queen takes f6, rook h7, rook f3. So the idea of rook f3 now is if he plays, let's say he takes on a4, I might be able to play rook to h3. Because now if he takes, I take a check. And then if he goes, if he goes in the back rank. I get, I take the rook with check. And it goes this way. I can take here with check first. And um, if he starts going this way, it's going to be really good for me. I can just, oh, I could probably just win the queen actually. Oh, it just, it just wins the queen. But yeah, but if he does something like this, then this is really, it's really bad too because I can just take again with check and then come back, win the rook. And the best we've heard would be king king c7, so there's no check when I take any more pawns. And I guess I'll just I'll take here. Actually, no, I'll probably play, I'll play check first, force the king to c6, and then take. Because now I'm threatening to play take here with check, also check, and we'll win the queen. So, this is very good for me. I'm two pawns up here. And as long as I can protect my king, I think my king uh, looks fine. Um, I should be winning. So, yeah, that was my idea. He didn't play that though. He played. He took on e2 first. Rook takes now. Queen takes h4. Um, a4. Now I decide to play h4, which is not as good. This move. I should have played. Should have just played this anyway. Rook h3. And I don't know why I didn't. Well, I guess there's a check. King f2. And then maybe this is a big problem. Rook takes h3 because now he's actually threatening to take on h2 and win, a, win my rook. And then these checks don't seem to be working quick enough. Because he can. Yeah, he can just play something like king c7. King c7, if I take his rook, then I'm actually losing now. So, although I might be able to get a draw by perpetual. I think I'm losing. Okay, so yeah, that doesn't work now. So, I did, so I played h4 instead, and the idea is just to try to cut off this rook from my king. Queen d1 check, king f2, queen h1, and now king g3, which is not 
not the best apparently. I should have played D takes C5 here. Now to B takes C5, rook D3. So there's going to be some tricks on um, taking on D5 and I'm just going to queen across and like this. Queen H takes H4, queen takes rook takes H4. And then I guess I, I try to hold this position. The computer's saying. But oh, this doesn't look too clear to me. It looks like black's doing better. So I think the move which I played was well, should I play king d3 and then oh this is why it's, yeah this is the reason king g3 wasn't very good Black, I'm actually in a lot of trouble now um, my, although my position looks fine you know rook g h8 looks like a very natural move and then rook h2 this sort of ends in a perpetual but what well, what Black should have done here, which wins, is he has a very good, um, very good move here. Just force and hold position open against my king, and uh, I'll, I'll let you pause the video and try find that move now. So Black's playing the win. Okay, so the move Black should have played was g5, and now it doesn't matter which way I take that pawn. I'm not doing very well in either of them. With f takes, queen takes h4, check, king f4, and then stroke g6, and I lose my queen. If h takes g4, as it's looking very nasty, especially when, um, oh, first of all, rook g6 could be played just to win the queen, or there's a very. could end up mating him, or rook check. And just win the rook on f3 with checkmate. And if I obviously queen takes is no good either because then my queen just gets taken. So this pawn actually can't be taken. And now it's cut off the protection of this pawn from my queen. So he's just threatening to take here with his queen. And then I'm going to be in real, real trouble. He's probably going to checkmate me now. He's also threatening just to play rook g6 and and win my queen. So yeah, g5 was a really good move here. Luckily my opponent didn't see it. He played rook hg8, or g h8, which um, you can't blame him. That looks a very logical move, you know, adding more pressure onto the h-file, attacking this pawn. Since the rook on g8, it didn't look like it was doing, which is just hitting a, a, a pawn on g6. So it's rook f g g8, rook f2, rook h2, king god, and it is just perpetual now, it just keeps checking me. And I can't play anything like move my king. I need to take the h file because it's going to be rook takes. And the queen's protecting the, the queen's protecting the rook here. And um, I can't play this rook either to block the check. Because he checks me again. Put the rook here. He just keeps checking. So if I come back, then he's got takes here. So. I have to keep blocking the rook, and it ends in a in a draw, which is it's a little annoying being the higher rated opponent. But you know the game didn't go quite well, quite to plan. I think I played a little too defensive in that game. You know, blocking whole position up with 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 these pawns all on dark squares, and they didn't really give me a chance to to really attack his king. You know, his king just stayed up d7 the whole game and was really safe, unlike my king. So. Yeah, I wasn't too pleased with my performance in that game, and uh, yeah, that's hoping better for next for the next round.